All right, time to talk about Deadpool. Deadpool 2. Deadpool 2. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we just saw three films. We saw Deadpool 2 first, first and then we saw some other stuff. Yes. Um, <laughs> so this is a little bit farther away for yeah. us. Um, yeah. Okay. But yeah, Deadpool. Um, I am not a Marvel fan. I, I am a Marvel fan. He is a Marvel fan. The only thing in Marvel I really like nowadays is, like, maybe Spider-Man, because I grew up with that. My second favorite thing would be Deadpool. Because Deadpool itches the meta itch. Mm-hmm. And it's the most daring mm-hmm. out of everything Let's that Marvel Let's start with has this. Done. Do you prefer um, the first film or the second film? The first film. Same. By far. Same. This By film far. does not feel as nearly as revolutionary Ugh. as that film felt. It's not just it's not as revolutionary. Well, like, revolutionary is the wrong word, Ugh. but, like, stepping outside of the Marvel formula, even if a little. Like, it still was in the Marvel formula, but it was so out of character for Marvel in a lot of sense. A lot of ways. The, that Deadpool 1? Deadpool 1. Really? Yeah. I have the opposite feeling, actually. Really? I still prefer Deadpool 1, but I feel like one of my biggest gripes with Deadpool 1 was that it still felt like a superhero origin story from beginning to end. And no matter how hard Deadpool tries to break the mold, it still ends up being that, and that's his biggest flaw. Because as self-aware that he as he is, I just wish the film could have gone more. I think the plot of this film... Is a little more unpredictable. Yes, and that's once true. it really starts kicking in, I think the story is my favorite aspect of it. The story to me was very weak. Really, and that's mo- well, most Marvel stories are just weak as hell to me in general. Mm. Um, but this one felt particularly weak in comparison to other stories, just because the stakes were not that high. Um, but like, I don't know. It's really hard to say because with a character like Deadpool. Like, the purpose of Deadpool is to sort of mock its own genre. Mm -hmm. But it's in a very... Deadpool here is in a very difficult position to do that. Yeah. Because even though he's mocking the genre, he has to also indulge in it. He's indulging in this one way more. Yeah. That's for sure. So he's doing both. Yeah. Which makes for very... I think that's the biggest issue with these films, Uh with these Deadpool films. Like, Uh I would be so much more satisfied if... He completely denied exactly. the genre. Exactly. Like, imagine a Deadpool movie that was not a superhero movie. Right. That would be fucking amazing. Uh-huh. Yet it's still oh, they get into the same sort of, um, same sort of stuff that a s- actual superhero would get into. Uh-huh. The only difference is that it's Deadpool. Uh huh. And he's still fighting guys, but it's Deadpool and he's making snarky remarks to you. Uh huh. It's like it's a superhero movie disguised as. A Deadpool film. It yeah. doesn't actually feel like what a Deadpool experience should be like. But then again, the source material is still sort of like that in the mm-hmm. same way, I feel like. Mm-hmm. So I feel like this is like my own interpretation no, of Deadpool, it's not just but that. like, I don't know. Like, they spent, so, I feel like they spent so much money on these movies when what they could do is just make a clever film for not much money and make bank because it's Deadpool. Yeah. But if you yeah. just up the script and I don't. There's a way to make do it like a Blumhouse. Bl- I want to see a Deadpool movie directed by the person who who directed Thor two, Thor three, Thor or uh, the the Thor film that was mostly improvised. Yeah, well, not, we not, haven't not, seen it yet. Yeah, not that director. Do you want to watch it before Infinity War? Maybe. We should do it. I actually do want to watch that film because I know that director's work and it's really interesting. Speaking of that director's work, yeah. we'll get into that in a bit. Yeah, but because. Um, like There's not not necessarily here. that director, mm-hmm. but someone like that director who's not known for making Marvel films. Uh-huh. Like someone who will make just something that is not Marvel like at all, uh-huh. so that it can have the ability to not be Marvel, and since it's not Marvel, completely go against Marvel. Well, you know about the history of Marvel and inviting other directors, right? Yeah, they, they do it, like, all the time, right? No, well, you know the most famous case? You know who was going to direct Ant-Man but left? Oh, who? Edgar Wright. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, wow. Edgar Wright was go- set to direct Ant-Man. His creative decisions did not fit Kevin Feige, the, the, the you know, supervisor of Marvel. Uh-huh. And so he, was, he just left. Wow. Due to creative differences. Interesting. So it's interesting how they kept Taika Waititi. And we haven't seen Thor 3. So who knows? Maybe we'll hate it. Yeah, it could be something that's awful. 
Yeah. But it would be very interesting to see. I've heard nothing but good like, things. Like, the kinds of films he makes mm -hmm. feels nothing like Marvel. Right. And so far, what they've released of this film does not really feel like a Marvel film. Yeah. Like, they're, they're marking it like a Taiko... Uh, what's his name? Taiko Waititi. Like a Taiko Waititi film. But those aren't trailers. Those aren't actual scenes. You're talking about, like, when Thor lives as, like, a Oh, those aren't person. scenes in the film. Those aren't scenes in the movie. Oh. Those are just, like, what happened while Civil War was happening for every other Avenger. I see. The actual Thor movie actually takes place in Asgard and his hometown and it oh. features Loki. You saw the trailer. Hulk, oh, wait. Is it actually a... Hulk makes an appearance. I saw the trailer for this? You saw the trailer like countless times last summer. Last summer, every time I would close my eyes and then you, you would see the trailer and you'd be like, this doesn't look like it's directed by that guy. In that case, I'm even more interested to see this film because that means it is a Marvel film. <laughs> yeah, it is a Marvel film. Oh, gosh. Okay. But apparently weird. it's the one that made Th Thor everyone's favorite superhero when Thor was always everyone's least favorite because his movies were technically okay. the worst. I mean, though I don't think they're the worst. I like the Thor. I'm a Marvel fan, so... Yeah, okay. we just talked about Thor Ragnarok for the longest time. I guess that's fitting in a Deadpool review, you know? We break yeah. down the universe. Yeah, I just I just so wish that Deadpool, like, they do so much to break out of the Marvelness. Mm -hmm. I wish they could do more. Mm -hmm. And it feels like Deadpool is such a fantastic opportunity to do that. Yeah. But they only indulge it so far to still keep everything in the Marvel formula. Yeah. Well, okay, Deadpool... I mean, Deadpool is now owned by Disney Marvel because Disney bought 20th Century Fox. Mm. But I feel like this is still very much like 20th Century Fox's Deadpool. Yeah. So this is a different series of writers. This is like... Again, one of the directors of John Wick actually actually directed this movie. That's why in the opening title shots, you see that one joke, which we're not going to spoil because I remember oh. that we're not in spoilers yet. Whoops. Yeah. Oh, we're, yeah, we're not even spoiled yeah. yet. Well, I haven't really talked about the right, specific exactly. of the film yet. Exactly. But, um, I mean, I don't know. It's not hard to talk about this movie without, like, not really, like, talking about specific jokes. Right. But well, because, see, because with a Marvel film, you kind of know what to expect already. I think with this film, there are a couple of story pulls for me. And you'll have to under, try yeah. to understand. Yeah, I like, it, story... is, it is a bit untraditional story. Uh -huh. I will give it that. But you know why this movie did not work for me as well as the first one? Why? It's it wasn't funny. I thought all most of the jokes fell flat. I yeah, chuckled it wasn't that funny. I chuckled a handful of times, but other times I found the jokes to be very grating. Yeah, like the yeah, the humor did not yeah. really we'll, work. We'll break down the categories of jokes in the spoiler because I feel like that's a little too spoilery. But as a guy who found the first movie pretty funny, you know, the second film was not funny. Yeah, there was a lot of times where I felt like I should be laughing. Yeah, they like I like I understand the joke. I get what you're referencing, uh -huh. but I'm not laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what was interesting? The second film, they actually had Ryan Reynolds put his hand in the writing of the script. Huh. But a lot of people see this is just this comes down to how humor works. We're not saying that the humor is bad, but it's bad for us. And I know a lot of people who prefer the second one to the first one, mm -hmm. who think the humor in this one works better because Ryan Reynolds is writing it. I will say there are times when the humor feels a little bit more daring. Yeah. Like, like they seem to make meta theatrical references that seemed like trying to take it a little bit farther than the first film. Yeah. But not by much. And mm. rarely so. Mm. Like, it could be just be me a thing of being more aware of it than I saw in uh -huh. the first film. Uh -huh. um, but, Possibly. Uh, the film geek in me really likes it when I spot an Easter egg that he does that's from a film that's not related to Marvel or DC at all. Yes, that's always fun. Uh -huh. um, but sometimes he would have to... I feel like it could be more rewarding. That's... Yeah, like with Deadpool, it's almost like with the second film, mm -hmm. he's already set up the expectation that he's going to be the wise cracking reference guy. Yeah. So when he is the wise cracking reference guy, it's not really a surprise anymore. Exactly. And it's not it's not an expected. Uh -huh. It's like, okay, okay, got it. And there are <laughs> and moments, it's not funny. <laughs> the thing is, there are moments where the jokes would work better just visually rather than him adding a line. And there are times, okay, yeah, there are times where something 
was meant to be emotional and and you know a certain line could be interpreted in a sexual way but because of the context of when it was delivered in the film it wasn't interpreted in a sexual way but Deadpool had to be like oh I didn't mean it like that <laughs> there are moments when he does that yeah and I'm like man because I like the story personally and I thought that without those like a lot of the more emotional points which I did get a little emotional in this movie I would have hit would have hit better with that being said I give Deadpool 2 the same rating that I give uh I give uh Hotel Artemis Three stars? Three stars. This also might be three stars. For really? Me. Did we rate every single film three stars, the both of us? No, I gave four and a half to Hereditary. I think I gave Hereditary two and a half? Yes. Okay, so two and a half. But you said three. you okay. also might have given Hotel Artemis two and a half. Is it still three? Because you oh. enjoyed it. Well, I mean, Deadpool... Uh, I don't know. I might give Deadpool two and a half. No, or, okay. or three. I don't know. I mean, Go again, meta, meta, comes from the heart. meta stuff is my shtick. So I'm more Ugh, akin but this to... So but so badly. Yeah, it's... It was close to a one and a half. Okay. F- until the second half of the movie start. There was one key moment when things began and I'm like, this is good. This is very good. Okay. Except the humor. Oh, God, get that humor away from me. But this is good. Keep keep it like that. And it kind of kept okay. it like that. We should go into spoilers. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, should, yeah, yeah. I do want to talk about specific okay. jokes. Okay. Um, okay. Spoiler spoilers. time. We've talked about this spoilers. film enough. Go, go see it if you're a Marvel guy. Yeah. You, you, you already know if you're going to yeah, go see this. exactly. You've probably already seen this. <laughs> You've movie. probably already seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, like... I don't know. Like, the stuff with, like, Deadpool shooting the original Deadpool... The stuff with Wild Reynolds shooting himself. Oh, that's the very at end. At the end. Uh-huh. Like, the stuff with when he, like, starts naming off the actors' names. When he starts... Like, he did that more in this film than I felt like he did in the other film. He did. Um, but... Ugh, but the thing is, he recycled some of the same jokes. Yeah, because or the same talk- kinds of jokes. Well, no, no, no. He talked about Green Lantern in the first one. Oh, he did? He talked about the Deadpool in X-Men Wolverine Origins. That's true, that's true. He talked about these same characters. Yeah. And then, okay, I have not seen Logan, and whoa, comic book nerds, and cinema fans, I know this is unforgivable, because I'm not really caught up in the X-Men franchise, and when I see Logan, I want it to hit me hard. But for, I, I think this movie follows the plot of Logan. Yeah. Because Log, in, in Logan, Wolverine takes care of a kid. Mm. And he, we all know the ending of yeah. what happens to him. I mean, that, in Deadpool, you already see it. Yeah. But um, The first scene of Deadpool is almost him being a dick by spoiling it to you. <laughs> it's not just spoiling, but like... Apparently, that film is, does it very emotionally. Huh. Like, it's about old age. Okay. Like, Professor X gets Alzheimer's and stuff. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, it's very hard-hitting, very gritty. People cried and huh. stuff. So, the reason he did that was literally to bring back the feels. And there was one other film moment. Well, it's almost like bringing back the feels in an ironic way. Yeah. Also, yeah. The, the title, the John Wick's dog joke. Oh, my God. You know how to bring my feels. Yeah, that was the reference with John mm-hmm. Wick's dog. I see. Man. Man. <sighs> you know how to push my buttons, man. That was the first and only good joke. No, I'm kidding. There were other good jokes, but that one really pushed my buttons. Yeah. I felt proud when there was one reference I got that you didn't get. Oh, the Basic Instinct one? Yeah. Yeah, it took me a while. And then he (laughs) spoiled it. Oh, he did? Yeah, he was like, oh, it's Basic Instinct. Oh, okay. He literally said it, and that made me tick off. Because, I I mean, I know the scene. Everyone's seen that scene. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it didn't register at first Mm. until you said it. And then they said it. And then I'm like, (laughs) why did you have to do that? But then later on, he did a joke where he raises a phone that's shaped like a stereo up to Colossus. That is a reference of a movie, very iconic 90s rom-com. Oh, really? It's called Say Anything. Huh. And um, I'm glad he didn't reveal it. Because those of the older audiences or those who went on a Cameron Crowe face for some reason get that. And I wish there were more like that. I, I'm guessing there are more like that that we didn't get. Probably. Probably. 
But for every one of those that we didn't get, there was also a joke where it literally... He does the superhero landing joke again. Yeah, he does. Oh my god. Like, it was yeah. it was pretty good the first time because it's something you never realize in a superhero movie in Deadpool 1. Yeah. In Deadpool 2, it, the joke is made double stupid because he knows <laughs> it's not going to work and he lands and he's like, ow. Yeah, that's never going to... He repeats the same line. Oh, it's so bad. It's just so icky. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it felt really off. Just like, and okay, the only good song choice in the movie was at the very end when him and the girlfriend embrace one last time because they actually let the song play out. They use Enya. They use it for, like, you hear the song for like two seconds and then he talks over it. They use the happiness song. That was hilarious. <laughs> but that's only the hilarious fa- for us because we just we, saw we it. saw happiness. Yeah. There's a song I forget it was yeah. like I want to love somebody or something like that. Um, I've run out of love or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. If you've seen happiness, that song. Uh, that song was was it's one of the only tender moments in the film. Mm-hmm. But what happens immediately after a certain revelation immediately yeah. after that scene yeah. fucks it up. Yeah. And happiness is yeah. amazing. Happiness but, is but but viewer so discretion yeah. is advised. Yeah. Okay, b- back to Deadpool. Yeah. Yeah. The moment it started getting good for me was the car chase. One right from the car chase, I'm oh, like, yeah. this finally we have an extent an extended sequence that is something that's not just the humor. The whole setup of him assembling the team mm-hmm. and the, it going to shit. Uh-huh. I actually bought. Oh, into I like that. that. I like that too. That no, was okay, funny. That's the official beginning. That was that funny. was the start. That was that felt Deadpool. Yeah. That felt like a good parody of the superhero. Right. Exactly. Because it was like everything that a superhero movie should do, mm-hmm. and then it going completely against that. Yeah. But then it went into a car chase, and it completely indulged the superhero movie. Oh, for but me. I love the car chase. I loved it when everybody died. I. Oh yeah, well, me too. I like liked as it when horrible died. as that is, that embraces what I feel like Deadpool does best right the, when he the can... recruiting scene with yeah. the vanisher yeah and there's the luck chick um, yeah. Domino oh, yeah. she's, she's like, awesome like is, is luck even a, I imagine she's a real Marvel character is she probably like I almost hope that like I, I kind of want to know the history of that character yeah because that feels like such a dumb character uh huh like to have luck be your superpower yeah but they play it in a way here that's completely ingenious because it is a Deadpool film right like in any other superhero movie it'd be like this is dumb as fuck what the hell uh huh but because it is so dumb as fuck it works to the movie's um own strength yeah and like in the first film, I remember there was this one joke that threw me completely off guard, where he literally started n- naming off. Wait, I might have gotten this confused with the Lego Batman movie. Shit. Oh man, yeah. I don't remember. Oh. But I think it was in the first Deadpool film where he talked about Spider Man, and then he's like, "Oh, did you know that one of Spider Man's villains was like a ketchup and mustard dude? He just spews ketchup and mustard." And I was just like, "Okay," like. Because Deadpool delivered this line, or it could be Lego Batman, I don't know. Because Lego <laughs> Batman was also very meta. Mm. Um, yeah, I, ah. What, whichever film it was, that joke worked because it was a comic book character totally mocking another comic book character, digging out obscure information and like letting the audience know about it in a way that worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So those are the jokes that I, I can't really categorize them. It just. The first Deadpool had a better flow. You're just like, oh yeah, yeah, he's doing shit. Yeah. And then... Oh, you know what? I think, you know what it might be? What? What's the motivation of Deadpool? Deadpool goes from suicidal to, like, wanting to save this kid. Yeah. To, like, who knows what. Yeah. But because he is a metaphysical character... Like, doesn't that mean he has some sort of agency over his own story? So why does he feel like... Su- why does he feel suicidal if he's like a meta crack guy? I think I, 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 think like, I understand. It just, it no, just no. doesn't make sense I think to me. It, I understand it. I think it's just that he, he can't control his own... Ooh, the windows are fucking up. He can't control his own story, but he can control... But he's aware. He's aware that there's an audience... 
and he's aware of our world and the references, but he cannot control his own story. I guess that's okay. Yeah, I think that that makes sense to me. Okay. So he's still within his own story and his own universe. He still deals with shit. Mm-hmm. And when the film really takes that seriously, I, I like it. I really like it. I also really like Julian Dennison in this movie, which we can talk about Hunt for the Wilder People, because in that movie, <laughs> yeah. Julian Dennison also plays a guy who's obsessed with gangs. Oh, yeah. You're right. Skuck's life forever. Yeah. It works much better in that film, though. <laughs> it's true. But I'm wondering if the writers knew... But apparently, yeah. no, no, he's, he feels he's, a little typecast. But he, but he's in the big leagues now. He's like going to be in the next. He's stuck in the MCU. Yeah. He has this other mainstream MCU main MCU movie that he's going to. Oh really? Yeah. Oh boy. He's already set. Okay. Yeah. He's tied in. He's tied in. He's roped hey, good in. Good for him. I'm. I was. I mean, I'm sure that's a lot of money for him. So. It's a lot of money for him, and yeah. I really liked him in Hunt for the Wilder People. He was an awesome character. He was a great actor. Yeah. It's, for his age, yeah. he's a great actor. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, you gotta, you better s- embrace his childlike charm before he hits puberty and turns into a deep voiced man like me. <laughs> you know, because yeah. he's still, he's still got that childlike voice. Yep. And you know, you gotta keep on, yeah, keep on doing it. Yeah, he's not gonna be young for too much longer. Yeah. And there's stuff like, like his like running gag with Colossal, how they're like in love and stuff. Like it just didn't really work. Like okay, sure it's cheeky. Yeah. Oh, what do you think of the political correctness? In the movie, where he just kept on addressing that was, racism. That was kind of, I don't know, like, it's, it seemed almost out of character for him. Right. Like, it's almost like he's he's calling Marvel racist or something. He's just, I, because I'm a guy who thinks that internet culture today goes a little too far. So, I found his comments grating, but I thought they were maybe intentionally grating. Maybe he's commenting saying... You know, you guys are a little oversensitive about these things. See how see how tedious it is when I address all these issues? That's my interpretation of it. Where it seems like he's like, by by addressing everything, he's like bringing out the point that it is very tedious to Still do Still at it. the same time, though, like, there's like, what's this, the kid being an actor? Who's mm-hmm. like, who he mentions like, oh, the fat kid never gets like the... Um, the role, and he's also Hispanic, and then there's also Lady Luck, who's an African American woman. Uh-huh. I mean, there are Lady roles. Luck. There are roles in the film. Lady Luck, film. take the wheel. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> what the? F- in any other film, that would not work. Yeah. Um, but like, there, like, this role has like significant minorities mm-hmm. as main characters. Uh-huh. Um, and then you get the fucking Japanese lady. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like every time she says bye, bye he says bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um. I mean, I don't, I don't know how to feel about it. I mean, the SJW part of me is like, yay, go Deadpool, but uh-huh. I'm not sure what message he's communicating by Right, doing exactly. That. Yeah, <laughs> it's odd. I don't think it works as much as I want to think it works. Okay. So, I was, by the time we get to like the climax of the movie, I was ready to give it three and a half stars. I'm like, you know, I know that this is a three and a half star film. But then the humor has to come back. And you know in what way? It drag Deadpool keeps on dying and coming back again. You know, yeah, I It's this thing because like you know he's not gonna fucking die. Like I knew he wasn't gonna die. Like, are you really gonna have Deadpool die? But see, you're not he gonna have Deadpool die. die. He does die. And then everyone gets sad. But like it's like, do you feel sad here? Do you feel funny? Like, it's almost like they wanted you to feel both. Right. And here's like the thing. It's like they couldn't decide. No, no, here's the thing, though. You know, it, it, there's supposed to be something really clever going on where it's eventually revealed that the reason that he comes back to life is because uh, fucking yeah, the, Cable. The, the guy, time yeah, travel. Cable right. uses time travel to a different spot than what, he, what we had anticipated. Uh-huh. And I thought that was pretty clever. And I thought that, you it's know, clever, but... I thought there, that if done well, if like Deadpool just died the first time and then it happened, it could have actually been dramatic for both Cable's character and Deadpool's character. And both of those characters, we'd buy into the drama more. Mm. But with him just continuously cracking jokes and coming back before he finally dies, it just watered down the moment by so much. It's like, 
it's like they kind of wanted to do both. They wanted yeah. it to be the funniest and the saddest. Yeah. And the result was just like in between mediocrity. <laughs> Yeah, no, and maybe if it did it once, yeah, okay, we'll we'll let you indulge the one time. But then he keeps on coming back. I mean, if he, I mean, I actually I love the idea of him taking forever to die. Uh huh. And I felt like he did it in a way that was funny, but it should not have been tried to be sad if it was. Right. Exactly. Like it should have totally committed exactly. to exactly. the humor of di- taking forever to die, uh-huh. instead of like, oh, you're taking forever to die. This is so sad. It's right. not sad. You're taking forever to die. That's right. funny. What really? Like, if you really want to go the comedy route, what you could do is linger more on all the other characters' reactions. How they're like trying to cry, but they can't. Well, it kind of did that a little yeah, but bit, but instead, one shot. But of, like, instead, cable. it was just like, "Come on, say fuck, say fuck." Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, it's so. It's so in the middle. Yeah. A lot of this film was so in the middle. Yeah. I like. I feel like there. There's a push and pull with this film of. Somebody in the writing trying to wanting Deadpool to be dramatic. Uh huh. With like his girlfriend dying uh-huh. and with like all the shit hap- that Deadpool's going through. Mm-hmm. But for one, it, none of that feels genuine on Deadpool's yeah. like part for me because of who Je- Deadpool is. Yeah. And like Deadpool, like what made the what makes Deadpool so successful as a character is his comedy. Yeah. And. It felt. It feels like the drama just sort of like pulled back, forced the comedy to pull pull back in a way that was just de- detrimental to it. Oh, see, I liked I liked it when it was pure dramatic. I thought the, like you know, I'm a sucker for these storylines where like, I thought it was well written. Where like Deadpool, you know, has to deal with his own like suicidal thoughts because of the loss of his girl, and then he just saves he saves this kid. Who's like this baddie? And you know, I I like to think about like superheroes and their morals and stuff. And I think that to a degree, it this was, film, yeah, it did not work for me. No, yet. it worked for me it did not until work it for didn't. Me. It did not work for me. Well, at all. that's the, the, the yeah, I understand. <laughs> I've but, said that like, like three times. I got it. <laughs> but uh, it, see, it did. It worked for me though, and that makes me sad that it kind of cops. It does the cop out thing where it just does humor. And another thing I would say is I think his chemistry with his girlfriend, especially near the beginning, was better in this movie. I like seeing how he wants to like have a family and stuff. So to have that last moment feel like nothing when they like embrace. I, I felt like he did not earn that at all. Exactly. Exactly. Like, it's like, oh, they can fix it. Oh, they can get his girlfriend back. Like, it just felt like a throwaway, like, nothing. Right. But the scene itself is ah, uh, the scene itself is so good. Where like now is not your time to die yet. Like in in a more dramatic superhero film, I, well, I guess it can't work because it's not Deadpool. Where you can't literally have this weird world. Like, but I can see that line working. Now it's not your time to die. If you really buy into the romance between the two characters and you really feel his longing for her, that's a scene that could work perfectly. I didn't get it at all. Oh, whatever. It's okay. It, well, you know, you don't come to Deadpool to, to to want that. Yeah. But I I got converted partially because of the way the movie dealt with it, in my opinion, so successfully. But I'm I guess I'm just a big softy. Well, you're also more f- a fan of what Marvel is doing. Yeah. With their films. And yeah. I'm not. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So there's the there's the difference. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll watch Thor Ragnarok and say what we think. Yeah. I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah. I assume there'll be a Deadpool 3 sometime. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. This is giving me, like, not much motivation to see the next one. Like, I know. mean, if this one doesn't do that well, or has it, it know, done well? It's, it's done well. It's done well? It's, okay. like, the second biggest R-rated opening of all time or something. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, or even the biggest. I can't remember. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it's Deadpool, so I... Yeah. Know. It's fine. It's, it's fine. It's It's frustrating. What else was there? Um... Yeah. Oh, you know, Cable eventually became an interesting character. I mean, again, I this is coming from a Marvel fan who like, okay, yeah, I see he has a daughter and he needs to kill the boy. And it's like, wow, this is interesting. But they did not start set him up like that. You see him literally do the time travel. You see him literally cock the guns and like, I'm a villain. I'm a tr- cliched villain. And I guess it's kind of nice where like, you know, you see his... He shows his real guns later on, but it uh, it could be so much more. 
You know what's a good... Oh, I should have said this during the spoiler-free section. You know what's a good three, th third wall breaking thing? Like a movie that you could watch? Anti-porno. Watch anti-porno. Anti-porno is exactly what, like, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's very different. It's about Chion Zono and his exploration of perversion. But if Deadpool had the balls to do what anti-porno does, it would be so good. It would give... It would justify its R rating. It'll add a little bit of creepiness. Like, like even the violence in this movie feels so thin. That's because there's violence in all Marvel movies. So, but, but, like, but this is a film that takes pride in its R rating. Oh, true, true. So there are bloody things. Yeah. But yeah, like, the violence in this didn't phase me at all. Yeah, no, the first film had some... Like, like they were either funny or they were... Okay, it was funny when Deadpool was fighting nude samurai Japanese men at the beginning. That was pretty funny. Yeah, it's just like, why is he doing this? Yeah. This is ridiculous. I mean, that yeah, that fit in with Deadpool's yeah. character. Oh, but I felt like... The beginning, man. I mean, the first film, you have the moment where he cuts his hand over, like, whoa, that's unexpected. How, I didn't expect him to escape like that. Like, there are moments that worked. And the first film had that torture scene where, like, his skin gets all craggy the first time. Mm -hmm. And I thought that worked. That added a little bit of discomfort that I thought, like, wow, R-rated superhero movie. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this didn't have that. Yeah. Didn't have that. Instead, it had like everyone getting surprised at this tiny dick that we don't get to see. Yeah, like what? Like yeah. it's like, look at his dick. I don't see a dick. What are you talking about? You're right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's yeah, very weird. I thought it was a tow truck for a second. No. Oh, we're being towed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we've been sitting here for like what hour and a half now. Oh yeah, pretty damn long. Oh yeah, it's pretty long. But, um, yeah, it's just, you know, if you like it more than the first film, that's great. If you like the first film more than this, that's great. If you just love Deadpool, that's great. If you like Deadpool, you'll like if Deadpool. You, if, you don't, if you don't like Deadpool, that's, that's, that's great. Yeah. I mean, know? with Marvel, you just kind of know what you're getting into. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, none of my expectations were exceeded this film mm -hmm. i got exact i i saw this film was exactly what i expected okay. which is it's very rare that i have expectations mm -hmm. but because it's marvel and because it's deadpool uh -huh. i already knew what this was going to be All and right. this was nothing else but okay. that okay yeah that's it yeah that's it thanks for watching our videos uh, we'll boy more all right, we'll come now to we theater more often. Yeah, we should do this more often. Yeah, I, I enjoyed this. Yeah, yeah, I stayed awake too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye.